Kentucky and Iowa, once again, yay. Um, people didn't, you know, I, I, I think you and I have talked before. I've done bold predictions for, um, for last word. And the one thing we kept hearing over and over is that they don't want to match the same two teams up, you know, year in back-to-back seasons. Kentucky and Iowa, of course, had that epic Citrus Bowl game last year, but the Cats won. And so all we kept hearing was it's going to be like, it could be Illinois, it could be Minnesota, maybe Wisconsin, and boom, it's Iowa. So so not only do Kentucky play Iowa again uh, in Nashville, but it's also the same time as the Kentucky Louisville basketball game, which was another reason why we at first didn't think Kentucky would, would head to Nashville. A lot of people thought um, that the Liberty Bowl might be their pick. Um, we found out later that the Las Vegas Bowl really wanted them, but the university kind of, um, uh, for lack of a better term, did, didn't want that because it's that first, it's that weekend right before signing day. So we, here we are. So we have Kentucky and Iowa playing again. And um, I, I think the last I saw, the over under was set at like 31 points. So, <laughs> uh, so it, it's, um, uh, you and I were talking before we went on that uh, several, you know, national writers have have put this near the top of their list of most watchable goal games, but I, but I'm afraid it's for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. And Kentucky's going to be without two of their 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 big stars on offense, which we, I'm sure we'll get into. So, so. So much has been said about bowl games uh, losing their luster and becoming meaningless. Okay. So one of the great reasons why we watch bowl games is to see teams play that never play. Mm-hmm. Seeing teams from different conferences. I, I still love the bowl games and still mm-hmm. want to see teams matched up from different conferences that would otherwise never play. Right. And to your I point, didn't... to have a repeat matchup just <laughs> almost defeats the purpose. And especially when the Big Ten and the SEC play I believe four games against each other. Mm-hmm. And I, and I understand LSU is not going to give up a citrus bowl slot or Purdue since those teams made the conference championship game. And that is a higher level right. of bowl game, but still these other games, as you mentioned, Illinois and Mississippi state are playing in a like bowl game. And um, there might be another one out there. So <laughs> I just, this is where there needs to be somebody that oversees the entire bowl process just to maybe say, can we right. make a tweak here or there? Mm-hmm. Because you could have Iowa play uh, Mississippi State. You could have uh, Kentucky take on Illinois. It would be a different matchup. And again, these two teams got together <clears throat> last year. Right. It was a really good game. But uh, yes, uh, so we've got no Will Levis. And mm-hmm. um, whom else is missing? Kapasi uh, Cr- Smoke from... Yes. Yeah, Cavazier spoke, put himself in the transfer portal, but we're also – Kentucky's also going to be without Chris Rodriguez. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, because Levis, Will Levis put his name officially – I mean, we knew it was coming – officially put his name in for the NFL draft and then announced that he will not play in the bowl game to concentrate, get ready for the senior bowl, and then go ahead with the, the 2023 NFL draft process. And – if we're being honest, he probably needs a little time to heal because, unfortunately, uh, the Big Blue Wall didn't quite have as great a season as what Kentucky fans have been used to. And um, he spent quite a lot of the year banged up. He had, you know, had a foot injury against Ole Miss. He uh, had show- a nagging shoulder injury, um, missed the game against South Carolina where, where Kaya Sharon stepped in and actually did a pretty decent, did a pretty decent job. And um, he he will likely be the starting quarterback when they play when they play Iowa. Um, and then the next day, Chris Rodriguez announced that he's going to concentrate on the NFL, um, getting ready for the draft. I think I looked around a couple of things. I've seen him maybe a fifth round fifth round pick um, in, in next year's draft. So the same kind of thing. He's he's going to prepare and get ready for the draft, and he he will not play either. And then, as you mentioned, um, Cavassier Smoke, who would normally get a lot of those reps, put his name in the transfer portal. Uh, Michael Drennan, another running back, put himself in the portal. So you're looking at Juton McLean probably getting a majority of the snaps at the running back position for this game. So um, I was looking over this the, the the rosters, and Kentucky could potentially 
play like start like five or six freshmen in this game um, coming up, or five or six guys with with limited, um, not very much experience. So, but yeah, going back to your point about the bowls, had it been Kentucky, Kentucky, and Illinois, despite their uh, proximity, hadn't played in over a hundred years, and um, Kentucky and Minnesota have never played in football. So, you know, right there, there's two, and I, and I know apparently the whole hang up was who got Notre Dame for what game and South Carolina. I think, I think it was the, it's not the Outback Bowl. Now the real Quest Bowl and the Gator Bowl were arguing back and forth over who got, who got what team. But, um, but yeah, I still think you could have, that you, you could have given us, you know, like she said, thrown us, thrown us a bone, so to speak, had made it a little more, a little more exciting. Just say, okay, yay, we get to play Iowa again. But anyway, no Levis, no Rodriguez, uh, no smoke. Uh, for Kentucky in, in, in this in this Music City Bowl. So on the Iowa side, we do an Iowa show every Tuesday. I won't go through all the names, but basically they're going to be without their uh, probably second best linebacker, one of their best defensive backs, their second leading rusher, two of their top three or four receivers, and we can insert a joke about them replacing their offensive players <laughs> and, and probably upgrading that. But their starting quarterback got hurt in the last game of the season, right. Spencer Petrus. Their backup hit the transfer portal. I guess they'll be going with the third-string quarterback. Mm -hmm. My goodness, this is going to be uh, – uh, right, we're gonna be searching for rosters and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be deep deep on that. Uh, we're already getting deep, kind of deep in the Kentucky depth chart, and then when I start actually doing a preview for that game, I'm be like, okay, who is this guy? Who is this? You know, you know, kind kind of thing. So you, you're you're right, and as you said, it's it's unfortunate because I, I too I, I love the bowl games. I, I've always been a huge, you know, I will get up and watch random game at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Absolutely. Friday from uh, which, which actually one of those first games is I think what is Troy in Texas, San Antonio, which is probably going to be one of the best games um, of the entire bowl season. But, but I mean, I love the bowl games. I've always, I've always enjoyed them. So I said, I, I still, you know, I'm going to say this, it, it, this is still going to be an exciting game because let's face it, all the years you and I have talked, Kentucky's never played, in a bowl game that hasn't been exciting or had something, you know, something crazy happened last minute, uh, you know, last minute thing. At, at one more point about the Music City Bowl, this is Kentucky's sixth trip to the Music City Bowl, which is far and away um, the most of any of any school. They went 99, 2006, 7, 2009, and then um, 2017, the game otherwise known as the Benny Snell ejection game. Um when they when they played Northwestern, so but I mean they haven't played in five years, and from a fan standpoint, I mean it's only a three and a half hour drive from Lexington to Nashville, so you have that. But there's a lot of other, as you and I just talked about, there's a lot of other factors um, kind of working against it in this game. But I still think you know it's it's a game, it's it's postseason, it's another month of practice, it's you know all those good coaching cliches you want to throw in there. And um, like I said I'm excited to see what happens when Kentucky gets. Uh, gets out on the field. They won't have their offensive coordinator, Rich Gangarello. He, he's gone. Um, he's a, to use a John Calipari term was unfortunately a one and done. So um, you may have Vince Marrow, uh, Scott Woodward, kind of a combination of coaches um, throwing together a game plan for, for this game. So who knows, they may just come out and uh, throw the, uh, you know, the last page of the old playbook with all the gadget plays. You just never know. <laughs> And to your point about the basketball game going on at the same time, especially when it's Kentucky basketball, mm -hmm. you would think that the TV networks would get involved and say, we, we don't need to compromise right. our rating, our TV rating and our audience, our potential audience here. Right. Yeah. And I, I, th I think one of I have to go back and look. I, I think the, the Kentucky Louisville, the basketball game may be on CBS. And of course, I don't know. I know. I don't know if you really follow have followed it. But right now, Louisville, unfortunately, is probably one of the worst major college teams in basketball right now. I think they're one and eight or oh and eight. Um and it's it's not been it's not been a pretty season. So, you know, you have that going in there too. But yeah, you you would think, but I you know, at the end of the day it's it's all about, you know, it's all about money, right? So somebody somebody will be watching and somebody will be getting some money out of this. So 